Hi there, it's Al from Bear Dog FX. Today I'm giving you a getting started tutorial for fretboard. You can find fretboard under the generators tab on the left of the Final Cut Pro interface. Click on it and you'll see four rows of effects for four, five, and six string instruments as well as strummer effects. These effects come in two varieties, dark effects for editing music videos and the lighter effects are for teaching purposes. The locked effects are fixed at 90 beats per minute while the adjustable effects can be customized to match your project's tempo. To use fretboard, drag an effect onto the timeline. Accurately animating a stringed instrument is achieved by stacking effects vertically and horizontally on the timeline and using a display selector to show and hide different aspects of the fretboard template in conjunction with the animation selector to determine the dot's behavior. Click on the fretboard effect and you will see five rows of dots representing the fingers of your hand and the open strings of your instrument. Select a finger and just click and drag a note to where you want it on the fretboard. You can change the default finger colors in the fretboard menu. Each fretboard effect contains 16 beats labeled in yellow from 1 to 16. When the blue playhead strip advances, it represents which dots are active during the animation sequence. Each beat represents one third of a second or 10 frames on a 30p Final Cut Pro timeline, which is also equivalent to 90 beats per minute using a standard metronome. 16 beats could equal two bars of eighth notes or four bars of quarter notes. The fretboard adjustable effects can represent any tempo and any timing scenario, including triplets and five eighths. To build an animation, add notes to the fretboard in the order you want them to appear, and then choose an animation preset using the animation selector in the fretboard menu. In the lower right of the fretboard interface, you will see a visual representation of the animation type you have selected. Press the spacebar to play back the animation. If you want just the first three notes of the sequence, grab the right edge and reduce the length of the clip. If we were to build the same skill using the adjustable type effect, reducing the length of the clip will only speed up the tempo. The adjustable effect will always contain 16 beats, irregardless of its length, as long as it is at least 16 frames long. This is the fundamental difference between the fixed tempo and the adjustable tempo fretboard effects. It can be helpful to think of each dot you drag to the fretboard like building blocks that can be stacked vertically or horizontally. You even get to pick the shape of the blocks and mix and match. For example, to illustrate whole notes that repeat, you could use a fade in block followed by three step default blocks. In this example, two instances of the fretboard effect would be needed because only one animation type or block per effect can be used. Or you could use just one effect and the fade hold animation preset, extend to length, and then copy and paste on the timeline to represent the individual notes. Let's look at a few real world examples. In this example, we have a guitar phrase with a simple bass line and open strings that repeat and ring on. There is a 90 beat per minute click track in the background. Drag a fixed tempo effect to the timeline. For beat one, drag an open dot to A, and for beat two, drag a second finger dot to B. Change the animation to fade in. Press the spacebar to play the animation. Reduce the clip to 20 frames so we only have two beats. Right click and label the effect A to B. Place a new fixed tempo effect next to the AB clip on the timeline. Drag a beat one, third finger note to the C position on the fretboard. Change the animation to fade hold. Press play. Drag the C note out so it matches the guitar track. All of the edits for this composition should land at 10 frame intervals. To advance 10 frames or 1 8th note at a time, just hold down shift and use the arrow keys. Copy and paste this effect and follow the same procedure for the remaining notes in the bass line. Paste the same effect above the bass line effects where the open B string is first struck. Follow the same procedure as the bass line notes. In order to see the baseline notes and the fretboard below, we need to change the display mode to dots only. Follow the same procedure for the remaining open B strings. Copy and paste the same effect above the baseline effects where the open G string is first struck. And again, follow the same procedure. Place an adjustable tempo effect on the timeline to line up 
with the beginning of the strum chord. Build the chord and apply to it the same beat order the notes are played. Use a tab label for the muted A string. Change the animation to fade hold and reduce the clip length to 16 frames. Scroll the timeline to find the exact frame the last string is struck. Scroll the fretboard clip and adjust its length so the last played note lines up with the last played note of the music clip. Copy and paste the clip to the end and extend it to the full length of the chord. Change the animation to off or chord keyframe. Press play. This example demonstrates the global animation feature which is used to save time when creating repeating patterns. The Shift X parameter was used to keyframe the simple two note chord changes. In the first two bars, the notes slide independently, so they were placed on separate effects. Tab labels were used to add a couple of X's to the D and D string at the end of the fretboard to represent the double tap. The 16th notes were created by reducing the length of the adjustable effect by half, effectively doubling the tempo. In the video inspector, the clip opacity was keyframed to turn the remainder of the clip off. In this example, a shifting scale made up of triplets is illustrated along with the use of dot trails. Because triplets were used, three beats for every quarter note of the metronome is needed, which is equivalent to two fretboard beats. To increase the tempo, the length of the adjustable effect was reduced by two-thirds, and then just copy and paste it throughout the composition. In sections where only 12 beats were needed, the clip opacity was keyframed to turn the remainder of the clip off. Generating trail dots is easy. Make a copy of your current clip, and in the animation selector, just select Off, Print Trail, and then under the display, choose Dots Only. Then drag the clip out to its desired length. For the gray secondary trail, turn the auto label off, and leave the fretboard displayed. The sliding note from the 9th to 7th fret was keyframed using the Shift X parameter. This example demonstrates how great the visuals can look when you accurately illustrate the sweeping motion of a strum chord. At the beginning of the chord, an adjustable tempo effect is used to animate the rapid sweeping through the strings. Find the sweet spot in the strum by scrolling the fretboard clip and adjusting its length so the last dot in the chord lines up with the exact frame the last string is struck. Just copy and paste this fretboard effect to the end of the clip, drag to length, and turn the animation to off. No need to rebuild the chord. The Shift X parameter and visual cues were used to animate the chord slide from the 3rd to 5th fret. The vibrato parameter was used for the last two chords. Keep in mind that bender dots need to be on the fretboard in order for the vibrato to work. For this last example, the fretboard effect base layer shown in purple was used for the back, frets and inlays, and the middle fretboard layer was used for the strings and bender dots. We chose natural frets for the fretboard type for a more natural fret spacing and the ability to select a custom number of frets. We used first finger dots with the color picker to mimic the inlays of the real fretboard. This project was keyframed with extensive use of the vibrato parameters and the dual bender dots. I hope this helps get you started with fretboard. There's more to come. Bye for now.